Optogenetics is the combination of genetic and optical methods to control specific events in target cells of living animals with temporal precision. For this purpose, proteins called opsins are used. But how does it work? To understand the operation of this technique, we first need to understand what happens in the eye and how the light is converted into electrical signals by the rhodopsin. When a light photon interacts with a photoreceptor cell, the rhodopsin undergoes a conformational change and activates a transducin that is called a G-protein. This causes the transducin to dissociate from its GDP and bind GTP. Then, the alpha subunit bound to GTP dissociates and activates a phosphodiesterase or PDE. In dark, there is an inward sodium current carried by GMP cyclic gated sodium channels. Phosphodiesterase breaks down GMP cyclic to 5' GMP. This lowers the concentration of GMP cyclic and therefore the sodium channels close. Closure of the sodium channels causes hyperpolarization of the cell due to the ongoing potassium current. This change in the polarization of the cell causes a nerve impulse that transmits from the eye to the brain. The majority of neurons work slightly different. Sodium channels are closed in non-excited stage and therefore the membrane is in its resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. When a stimulus is applied, sodium channels open and change the polarity of the cell in a process called depolarization. When they reach certain value around minus 55 millivolts, an action potential is triggered. After a few milliseconds, the membrane potential reaches the top of the spike at around plus 30 millivolts. The channels of sodium are closed and channels of potassium are open to try to repolarize the neuron. When the membrane potential reaches a value around minus 90 millivolts, the membrane is hyperpolarized and the cell is not sensible to stimuli. In that moment, the potassium channels are closed and the resting potential is recovered. This process continues as a chain reaction along the answer. In the same way the eye works, we can control the activity of other neurons with light if we transform them with the gene of an opsin. For this purpose, many opsins have been determined in many microorganisms. The most used opsins are the ones from the green algae Chlamydomonas reidal D and Volvox carteri, and from the Archaea Natromonas pharaonis and Alorubrum sodomense. Microbial opsins have been adapted for optical control of neuroactivity. Two main classes include halorhodopsins and channelrhodopsins. Halorhodopsin NPHR is from Natromonas pharaonis and ARC3 is from Halorumbrum sodomense. Both are found in highly saline waters such as the Great Salt Lake and the Dead Sea. Channelrhodopsin 2 is from the green algae Chlamydomona reinhardi. The channelrhodopsin 2 is a protein which causes the algae to swim towards or away from light. The halorhodopsins are examples of inhibitory opsins and the channelrhodopsin 2 is an example of an activator opsin. When stimulated by blue light, the channelrhodopsin 2 opens and an influx of sodium ions into the cell occurs. In a neural cell that has been genetically engineered to express channel rhodopsin 2, on stimulation by blue light, sodium ions rush into the neuron, causing depolarization of the neuron, effectively turning the cell on. When NPHR is exposed to yellow light, chlorine ions are pumped into the cell. When ARC3 is exposed to yellow light, hydrogen ions are pumped out of the cell. In a neuron that has been genetically engineered to express NPHR, upon stimulation with yellow light, chlorine ions rush into the cell, resulting in hyperpolarization and silencing of the neuron. The steps of optogenetics. The first step is to create a genetic construct. For example, the channel rhodopsin 2 gene from the algae is combined with a promoter element which allows for specific cells to be targeted. The construct is then placed into a virus vector. Two types of virus that are currently being used are the lentivirus and the deno-associated virus. 
the virus containing the recombinant is then injected into the mouse's brain. The virus will infect specific target neurons, which will now contain the opsin gene. An optrode containing a fiber optic cable and an electrode is then threaded through the mouse's skull. A light of specific wavelength is shown through the fiber optic cable, which stimulates the channel of opsin 2 in the target neurons. Records of the electrophysiological and behavioral observations are then taken. Examples of optogenetic experiments. This video shows the fiber optic control of locomotion in a channel Rhodopsin 2 mouse. Scientific researchers are able to control the movement of this mouse using light stimulation. By stimulating neurons with blue light in the right motor cortex, scientists are able to control the left side of the mouse's body, making it walk in a left-handed circle. When the blue light is turned off, the mouse stops walking in a circle. In 2002, scientific researchers demonstrated the control of Drosophila escape behavior through the use of photostimulation by pulses of light. Two out of 200,000 neurons were specifically targeted, resulting in the typical escape behaviors of jumping, wing beating, and flight. The prospects of optogenetics. Improvements in optogenetic techniques. Improvements in fluorescent proteins include the photoactivatable fluorescent proteins, for example, PAM cherry and TAG red fluorescent protein. The development of synthetic opsins, for example, opto-alpha-1 AR and opto-beta-2 AR, which are light-activated G protein coupled receptors, which act through the GQ and GS pathways. Further improvements of fiber optic cables are being carried out to improve the delivery of light to specific cells. Chimerogenesis of existing opsins allows for the fine-tuning of these opsins. For example, mutations of key amino acids in the CHR2 creates versions that are able to stay open for longer, after light stimulation. The development of calcium probes with genetically encoded indicators will allow for the detailed optical recordings of brain activity. The use of adeno-associated viruses as vectors is also being used. These viruses have short testing cycles which allow for rapid screening of recombinant promoters for targeting specific cells. These viruses can also achieve high levels of opsin gene expression. Using optogenetics. The use of optogenetics have led to a tremendous insight in the causes of a diverse range of neurological disorders, including narcolepsy, depression, drug addictions, blindness, and epilepsy, as well as providing potential new targets for the treatment. The most notable translational work using optogenetics is in the field of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a movement disorder which develops when the neurons in the brain area called substantia nigra begin to die. The main reason of their death is the accumulation of alpha synuclein, a round folded protein that interferes with the ubiquitin proteasome system and therefore with the cellular viability. The neurons of the substantia nigra are responsible for the production of dopamine a neurotransmitter that sends information to the parts of the brain that control movement and coordination. As the dopamine-producing cells die and the level of dopamine in the brain decreases, messages from the brain telling the body how and when to move are slowed more and more, rendering the person unable to initiate a control movement normally. One of the therapies for Parkinson's disease is deep brain stimulation in which the subthalamic nucleus is electrically stimulated in order to prevent the impulse that produces the tremor. Deep brain stimulation activates heterogeneous population of neurons as well as fibers. By using optogenetics, we can stimulate just the population of neurons involved in the disease. In the actual experiment, first, cells from the dorsomedial striatum were transformed with an injection of adeno-associated cray-dependent virus containing a fusion of channel rhodopsin 2 and yellow fluorescent protein. As the expression of the protein is cre-dependent, it will be expressed just in the energy jet cells. Then, 
An optical fiber is implanted in the subthalamic nucleus region of the brain. Treating the brain with rapid flashes of blue light activates medium spiny projection neurons of the direct pathway in the subthalamic nucleus and cortex. Motor behavior is restored as well as bradykinesia is eliminated. When flashes of blue light are delivered to the ends of the neurons at the surface of the brain, researches the death activation of the cells deep within the brain. The red line within the circle shows an untreated animal's path and the blue line shows the animal's path over the same amount of time when treated with light delivered through the fiber optic. The animal's ability to move more quickly and easily, a result of optogenetic treatment, provides important scientific insight into the affected brain circuits. Although optogenetic therapies face an, an important practical obstacle in humans due to the requirement of an introduction of a foreign gene, they may one day become a viable method for disease treatment.